Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be giving you six tips on how to control your TikTok usage that are grounded in actual psychology. Now, I'm using TikTok as the main example in this video, but this advice can also apply to any other app on your phone that you feel like you're spending too much time on. Now, I was inspired to make this video because of you guys. My current most popular video on this channel is TikTok's Addictive Psychology Explained, and the comment section of that video is filled with testimonies from you guys telling me how much TikTok has ruined your life and how you're really struggling to take back control of your behavior. For example, look at this comment from Stephanie. Stephanie says, TikTok ruined my grades. I used to be fine, addicted to my phone, but could stop and focus and study. Now it's impossible. It's so addictive, I can't stop. I study for five minutes, then go back to TikTok. I'm almost failing all my classes. I just want to stop phone addiction in general. Well, Stephanie, this video is for you and for anyone else who's watching that feels the same way. But why should you listen to me about how to break your TikTok addiction? Well, that's because I'm a behavioral scientist who specializes in the science of habits. And while we call TikTok an addiction, to me, it seems more like a strong habit. Now, habits can be just as destructive as addictions, but the distinction is important because it means that if we can classify TikTok addiction as actually a habit, then we can take insights from habit psychology and habit models and then apply them to TikTok behavior, which is where these tips are coming from. So I'm gonna go through six tips now, starting from the least extreme to the most extreme, and depending on how bad you feel like your problem is, you can pick and choose which insights you think are most appropriate for your level of addiction. All right, so let's start with tip number one, which is turn off notifications. <laughs> For people who only have a small problem with apps like TikTok and other social media, turning off notifications might be the only tip you need in order to control your usage. That's because when app developers try to get users to build habits of using them, they tend to do so through notifications in the beginning. Pings, little banners, and of course the little badges on the icons act as triggers and cues for you to check that app and open them. We know from habit psychology that if you remove the cue or the trigger to that habit and take it out of people's environment, the chance of them performing that behavior drops quite dramatically. So if your habit of checking TikTok or whatever social media you're using tends to be triggered by notifications, then simply just turn notifications off and you might find that you have a lot more control over how much you use it. Now, turning off notifications is a great first step, but for many of us, we tend to check social media even when we aren't noticed notified to do so with no badge, no ping, no banner on our phone, and yet we still seem to be picking up our phone and swiping. So if that sounds more like you, then these next five tips are going to be more practical. And that brings me to my second tip, which is to hide your phone when you're trying to focus. <laughs> For people like Stephanie, TikTok seems to have a big disrupting factor on their ability to study and focus on their important tasks. But you can help yourself focus by hiding the trigger to using your phone, which is often just seeing your phone on the desk. By putting your phone in the drawer or in your bag or simply charging it in another room, you can actually dramatically increase your chance of you being able to focus on what you're doing when you're not being cued by the sight of your phone in front of you. In psychology, we call this practice cue disruption, and it reminds me of a very famous study called the Marshmallow Experiment. In the marshmallow experiment, little four-year-old children were told to sit in a room with the marshmallow for 15 minutes, and if they didn't eat the marshmallow in that 15 minutes, then they would be rewarded with a second marshmallow. Now, that part of the study is very famous, and people who are familiar with it will know that, well, as you expect, most of those four-year-old children fail the test. They can't last the 15 minutes because, well, they're just staring at the marshmallow for the full 15 minutes. But what many people don't know is that that experiment actually had a second condition, and in the second condition, Condition, the kids were still stuck in a room with the marshmallow, but the marshmallow was hidden from sight. It was put in the container under the table. Now in this condition, the results were actually reversed and the majority of children were able to last the full 15 minutes and maintain that self-control. And so when it comes to social media usage, you can think of your phone as the marshmallow. Simply seeing it makes it tempting for you to use it. But by hiding it in a drawer, in your bag, or simply in another room, you're dramatically increasing your chance of being able to last the full 15 minutes and therefore focus for longer. Now, if these light touch cue disruption interventions are not enough, then we need to go a bit harder. So in the next few tips, we're gonna be introducing some friction-based interventions in order to help you reduce your usage. And all I mean by friction is simply, we're going to be making it harder for you to actually use TikTok, and by doing so, we're going to make it less convenient and therefore more likely that you'll be able to control yourself. The first tip to introduce some friction is to turn off automatic login. 
To do this on TikTok, you go into profile, settings, save info off, and there'll be similar settings on apps like Instagram or whatever else you're struggling with. By turning off automatic login, you're basically making it a hassle every time that you want to check that app. But if you feel like these apps are taking over your life, then this might be a step that you'd want to consider because by making it inconvenient every single time, you're reducing the chance that you'll just log in and start swiping automatically. And if having to log in every time doesn't introduce enough friction, then what about having to download it again, which is where tip number four comes in, delete it. By deleting the app, you have to re-download it every time you want to use it, log in again with your credentials, which just adds multiple steps and a slight delay every single time you want to use it. And research in psychology shows that when we introduce a delay to a behavior, people act more mindfully when they're thinking about doing it. For example, in a previous study done on an elevator in a hotel, when the slight delay was introduced to the doors in that hotel, meaning that people had to wait to take the elevator, more people started taking the steps. That slight delay, that slight inconvenience before using it, allowed them to come to a more mindful state and actually decide that hmm, maybe taking the stairs is the better option for me. And for many of those people, they made a habit out of taking the stairs. In the same way, by deleting the app and turning off automatic login, you're adding that delay to using it, meaning that you'll have more control and you're more likely to be using that app mindfully. Now, these last two tips that I'm going to give you are the more extreme ones. These are for the people who are really struggling to take back control of their lives. They feel like they can't get anything done and that these social media apps are simply sapping all of the productivity out of their lives. That's where tips five and six come in. So let's look at them. Tip number five is get a hobby. Now, I know this seems really left field, like how would getting a hobby help with my TikTok problem? But think about it in terms of habits. Very often, our social media habits are triggered not by physical things in our environment, but actually our emotions and the way that we feel in the moment. For example, many of us check Instagram and Facebook when we're feeling lonely, or we start checking TikTok just when we feel slightly bored. These emotional cues are like biological notifications on our phones that cause us to pick them up and start scrolling without thinking about it. So how do we disrupt those emotional cues to the behavior well, we can simply eliminate them or make them less likely to happen. For TikTok, many people's habits are tied to the emotion of boredom. If you're bored, you check TikTok, even if only a little bit. So by filling your time with more stuff, by being more busy with other things, you're less likely to be bored. And therefore that trigger, that cue to using TikTok, that slight bit of boredom in your brain suddenly disappears because you're just simply doing other things. So if you're really struggling with TikTok and you feel that every time you're just a little bit bored, you start doing it, I would just sign up for a bunch of stuff. Join some clubs, join a sports team, join something else, start a new hobby, and by doing so, you'll feel less bored. This last tip is the most extreme one, and this is for people who really feel like their smartphone is completely ruining their lives. If you feel like that, then I would actually recommend downgrading to a non-smartphone. Not having a smartphone in modern times is like really inconvenient because so much of our life is dependent on the apps that we use. But if you're not having much of a life anyway because these apps on your phone seem to be taking over every aspect of your day, then downgrading might be an option you want to consider. In psychology, we would call this a commitment device. A commitment device is when we lock ourselves into a really inconvenient future because we know it's good for us long term. The famous example of a commitment device from history is the story of Ulysses and the Siren. The Siren Sirens from mythology are these mythical creatures whose song was so amazing that sailors would jump off their boats and crash into the rocks and die. But Ulysses wanted to hear the siren's song without obviously dying. So what did he do? Well, he filled his crew's ears with beeswax so they couldn't hear the song, but he ordered them to tie him to the mast of the ship and not to release him no matter what he said or tried to do. By having himself tied to the mast by his own crew, he was able to sail through the Valley of the Sirens, hear the sweet song of temptation that the sirens were singing, but because he was tied up, he couldn't jump into the water and hurt himself. Now this might seem really far removed from TikTok, but downgrading to a non-smartphone is actually working in a very similar way. Rather than tying yourself to a master of a ship, instead you're tying yourself to a device that literally can't have TikTok. So no matter how tempted you feel, no matter how strong that internal craving is for the app, you won't actually be able to use it because, well, you don't have access to it. You've tied yourself to the mast. So those are my six tips going from least extreme to most extreme, depending on how bad your problem is with TikTok. But like I said at the start of this video, these tips can also apply to any other apps on your phone that you feel like you're spending too much time on. So I hope this video helps some of you out and I hope you enjoy 
enjoyed it. If you did, can you please give me a thumbs up down below because it really helps me out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.